<laughs> Thank you, God, that we are here and able to make it with all yes, the walking that we had to go through, giving out boxes. We hope that we learn something from this Bible study today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, now let's get our scripture. We know we're talking on witchcraft. witchcraft. I, I, hope, I hope we get past two scriptures this time. Yeah. I hope we get past two. Y'all know I can preach witchcraft. Right. I can preach that thing. So uh, let's get our scriptures. Galatians 5, 19 through 21. We're working on the works of the flesh. Uh, my YouTube channel is Resilient Truths. We did the fruits of the spirit. We're on the works of the flesh. If you don't want to go back and look and catch up with us, that's where you'll find the videos at. So, um, verse Galatians 5, 19 through 21. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, vagrants, emulation, wrath, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revilings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. All right, that's pretty plain and simple. Lord, I've been busy feeding your people and blessing your people, Lord. Now you feed your people. When you stand up, I shut up. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Um, basically, like I said, I don't think we're going to get past the two scriptures. <laughs> the first scripture is Leviticus 19.31. Yeah, Leviticus 19.31. Wait. Yeah, Leviticus 19.31. We talk about witchcraft. We're on witchcraft today. The second part of I'm gonna say I'm gonna say second because we probably not gonna get done today either. Regard not them that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. Okay, we talking about the uh, familiar spirits. Remember last week we talked about gossip. We talked about idolatry. Yeah. We talked about being in the midst of people that you feel comfortable with. Yes. Pay attention to who you in the midst of people and what they're doing. If you feel huh? Leviticus 1931. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Be, be you know, if they gossiping, if they backbiting, if they, you know, if they and you feel comfortable in that presence, you don't need to be in that. You don't need to be in the midst of that. Because God is not in that. Right. And you know, you'll carry off of, you ever like I said last week, you ever walk into a building, you happy go lucky, and all of a sudden you walk out of there and you feel angry or you feel sad, you feel picked up a spirit, you know, carried it with you. Just the tone of that room. I always say women set the tone, they set the atmosphere. Um, a woman, a cantankerous woman, somebody when she's upset and they're throwing pots and pans in the kitchen, she sets the tone of that house. She'll run all the kids out the house. You know, stuff like that. Solomon said, I'd rather sit on the roof than in the house with a dripping faucet. That dripping faucet is the nagging woman's mouth. Wow. So the woman can set the tone. A woman is emotional. Men are left brain. They're logical. You can't be a very emotional person and be the president of the United States. You can't run business and be too emotional. Because logic. Now, when you got... Uh, equal balance, like that's why he said man and woman. Uh, equal balance, then you can you have everything. But I'm not saying that women can't lead. I'm not saying that men can't be you know have feelings or whatever. But a man, in order, he can't sit there and care for everybody and be able to run everything. Right. Because some people, like me, I have a heart to where y'all just seen we have more people signed up. Ain't nobody gave a donation. Not that I'm looking for that. But these people are in need. And my heart, if they need, I'm going to get to them. No matter where that money coming from, no matter how it's going to get, these people going to get a box. Amen. They're going to get their needs met. Yes. And I'll just let God pay the bill. However, he's going to pay the bill. Yes. Now, when you get to a, a, a running a business, you can't help everybody all the time because your business will go down. 
That's if you ain't got people, you know, giving back into your business. Yeah. So you got to have a logical mind, a right mind, and a left brain. A right brain and a left brain. So they got to work together. You know, in the left, right brain and the left brain, that's common sense. When, when you have, that's what a lot of people in the church don't have. You know, we out there common sense in the world. But when we get in the church, we lose our common sense. Because we go to doing things that we wouldn't have done in the world. People doing stuff in the, you know, in the congregation that you see in the world, you know, they hustling and all that. Yeah. But let it be in the church. And they're like, oh, he doing this, you know, he doing that. But they still hustling. We still flesh. Right. We still, I mean, people still make mistakes. Yeah. So, um, I'm not saying not to give, but, you know, pay attention to what you give. Don't give your rent. Because mm -hmm. you'll find yourself in trouble. And I can speak from experience because I used to be in those churches, $500 line, $200 line, and I ended up in the street because I was, you know, thinking I was going to heave a blessing, you know, heave it out there, you know, and one day I was saying, oh, God, going to protect me. He did. Thank God two days later I was able to get an apartment, but for two days I was without out because I gave my $200 of my rent to this prophet. You know, thinking. But you know what I'm saying? That's doing stuff out of flesh, not doing stuff out of spirit. Yeah. You got to know the voice of God. God speaks to me in different ways. He speaks to me. I can look at a billboard. It'll say something to me. Um, I can look at, you know, I know his voice audibly. Uh, when he speaks to me, when people are speaking to me, y'all seen me prophesy right then and there. I know the voice of God now. Because that's because I went through that. Right. I went through thinking that was God, and it wasn't. It was my flesh, and it was man. I can't blame it on nobody else. That man didn't have a gun in my head when he asked me for the $200. Right. But there's a lot of people running around with church hurt mm -hmm. because they didn't gave all this money, and they nothing came to pass. Right. Because, and that's another thing. If you don't believe in it, what's the point of giving the money? Hmm. Because you got to first believe. you got to have faith. Mm -hmm. Without faith, you can't please God. That's right. So, And that's where witchcraft comes from because... These are the people that don't have faith in God. They have faith in everything else, like idolatry and uh, backbiting and gossip. They have faith in all these idol gods and everything on the outside of the spirit of God. If they had faith in God, they wouldn't be doing what they're doing. God calls us to be holy, and ain't no holiness in witchcraft. Witchcraft breaks down people. It goes against other people. When you love God, you walk in love. That's walking in spirit and in truth. If you walking in anything besides love, you you know you're not walking in God. So therefore, you can't blame God. Um, I was trying to go through the, the let's let's go into the next one. Uh, Leviticus twenty and six. Leviticus twenty and six. It come on the blessed for a little bit, but then they they must have cut down the power bill or something. <laughs> right. <laughs> And the soul that turneth after such as have for familiar spirit, spirits and after wizards to go uh, warring after them, I will even set my face against that soul and will cut, them off, cut him off from among his people. Now giving you a little background on this scripture, this basically takes the whole book of Leviticus uh, 20, See, that's what I did want. This song to act up. I'm trying to get to my scripture. Leviticus 20, from 1 through, um, all the way through 27. This basically talk about all the, the things God was saying. Like in verse 2, it's talking about um, giving seed unto Molech. Molech means, that's a, the God of human sacrifice. Particularly, child sacrifice. So we're talking about sexual immorality. We're talking about child molesters. We're talking about sexual offenders and stuff. That's why God said he'll turn, he'll, they're defiled, that he'll turn his, um, if you, we go a whoring after people like that. That is a sin, you know, sacrificing humans, sacrificing children. That's not of God. Um, he said he'll even set his face against that soul. That's why you can hear stories when people go to prison, you know, of those natures that, you know, they fend for their life in there because, I mean, they may have done whatever they done in the prison, but let a child molester or, or sex offender go in there and then touch the child, and you will hear about them passing away. You won't hear about them, you know, because, you know, even that, you know, people pay attention to. 
So he said, and the soul turning after such things as familiar spirit. These are people that's hanging with that spirit, that like to do, you know, those type of things. Uh, human trafficking, um, any kind of sexual immorality. That's against God. Mm -hmm. And it's also against yourself. So you can't put your faith in that, you know, offering that type of sacrifices and offering to God. God is not pleased with that. But, you know, that's offering worship to Baal. That's offering worship to the, the enemy, the devil. You know, anything, you know, idolatry. Y'all don't really realize how bad idolatry is. Idolatry is idolizing, you know, oh, I like the New York Giants. That's my, my friend. I like the New York Giants. I mean, it's not, just because they ain't idolizing to the point where, you know, you can't think of nothing and it's addiction. Right. If you put anything before God, that's, that's sin, period. If you put yourself before God, that's sin. Right. So anytime you put anything before God, you'll find lack in your life. Mm -hmm. Because if God is not going to be the head of all, he's going to be none of all. He right. said you got to serve him wholly. He, ain't gonna, he don't want to half step it. He wants you to serve him wholly. So he's not going to share his glory with nobody. He right. is, you know, he's a jealous God. So anybody, of, I'm talking about these pulpit preachers, you know, anybody get up there and they get into their own self and their own flesh saying they did that, they did that. You notice they start to fall off. You notice that God is starting to expose them. You know, they starting to get sick and all of that because they done took God's glory and God ain't playing. He's like, no, 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 you my creation. You know, you, you didn't do what I did. I woke you up this morning. So you're not the alarm clock. So that's what I'm saying, idolatry, anything that we idolize, any kind of addiction, I mean, anything that we wake up to in the morning to, uh, like I used to say, my coffee. My coffee, I drink coffee, yes. But I don't drink it to the point where it, that's what gets me going. I can read the scripture, and, you know, get into my word, it will give me the energy that I need. Amen. But we talk about people that start, you know, like when I was smoking cigarettes, gotta have a cigarette, gotta have, you know, when I was on drugs, I had to have crack cocaine. I had to have that. You know, though, that's idolatry. And God left me out there in the, in the street because that was my God. And when you get tired of that thing, that tangible thing being your God, then that's when you're going to say, okay, Lord, you know, here I am. Because yep. I just preached that message yesterday. Not yesterday, I'm sorry. Sunday at that women's conference that uh, said, um, uh, where's thy faith? It was on the woman with the issue of blood. She got to the point where she was so tired mm -hmm. of sitting there by herself, being, you know, ostracized by everybody. Right. Because, you know, she was unclean. They say she was unclean, but her purification had gone on for 12 years. When you get to the point where you're so tired of the devil kicking your butt, mm -hmm. you're going to get up and do what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. You're going to get up and open. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Yes. You're going to stop doing what you're doing. You're going to give it to God. Like I said, I'm 30 years clean and crack cocaine. Okay? I don't drink alcohol. I don't, you know, I stopped doing uh, cigarettes when Obama quit in 2008. Now, I don't know if he started back or not, but I ain't started back. So, <laughs> so I, everything, now I'm still working on my sugar habit, my sugar addiction. <laughs> but I'm not perfect, but I'm just saying, when you get tired of getting your butt kicked by the, by the enemy, then um, you know you got to do what you got to do to um, get it done. Okay, like I said, we talk about Molek. Molek, that's human sacrifice, human trafficking, sexual molestation. Um, we going down further. These are all the type of things that he's talking about, about familiar spirits and after wizards. Wizards are like, you know, the experts, you know, the scientists and everything. You can't idolize science. God created science. Yeah. But you can't idolize the scientists just because he, you know, discovered it. God created everything on the earth. Everything, yes. including yes. the enemy. Mm -hmm. yeah. He created evil as well. That's right. That don't mean we idolize it. Yeah. Without a positive and a negative, you can't have friction. You can't have stuff move. Without yeah. love and hate, there's got you got to have a choice. That's love. Without choice, you can't love nobody. Yeah. If if my child woke up every morning and didn't know anything but to love me every day. Mm -hmm. You know, how would I know she loved? Because, you know, she got a choice. You know, she got a choice to follow my rules or do whatever. That's how God is. If, like the angels, that's what makes us one step above them. They wake up every morning to praise him. Right. Every morning. But we have a choice whether we want to wake up and praise him or whether we want to serve the enemy. So, 
That's how you know somebody loves. That's why we one step ahead of the, of the angels. That's why God blesses us because you know He made us in His image. Mm -hmm. Every time I say that, y'all know you know we, we made in his, his image. You know He spoke everything. Yes, so what are you does. speaking? You have the same power. He spoke everything. Mm -hmm. So watch what you say. Yeah. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. That's right. Watch what comes out your mouth. If it, you know, if you want life to come out, if you want life to be surrounded around you, positive things, then you got to speak positive things. You got to live positive things. Okay. And it goes down to talk about sanctify yourself, for he is holy. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't be around people that is negative and misery loves company and, and call yourself a child of God because that rubs off on you. Mm -hmm. You got to be the spirit that changes that atmosphere. Like I say, a woman has influence. It took one woman to change one man's mind that created all this hell that we live in. Mm -hmm. It took one woman to change the heart of one king that created all the, you know, Jezebel. One mm -hmm. woman. There is power in a woman. Mm -hmm. Just the influence of a woman. So, and it's not just so much the woman. If you put your mind to it and God is behind it, there ain't nothing that can be held back from you. That's how much influence that you have. So, if we, that's how the devil gets us to thinking we are oppressed and we depressed. Because if he keep our spirit down, then we can't do nothing. The devil, and I'm not saying this to be racist or anything, I'm just saying I think a lot of scripture is misquoted as far as who belongs to what tribe and this tribe or whatever. Mm -hmm. We have been the most oppressed people throughout history that there is. Mm -hmm. We don't own nothing. Not many of us. So I'm saying the devil is really on us. So that's why I believe the children of Israel had something to do with us. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying we have got to stop being oppressed. We have got to get, I got out there because I got bored or whatever, and I said, well, I'm going to see about this. I'm going to put them things in place where we can get school. And here I am, almost four master's degrees and a doctorate later. You know, I believe if everybody put that much faith and, you know, get in and do that, you know, and learn something. And everything that I learned, I give it to everybody else free of charge because they came to me free. The only thing I paid anything for so far is my doctrine of divinity, of biblical studies. But, and I'm playing for a practicum, so I'm trying to be an LCSW. But everything else God gave to me free, basically. Mm -hmm. So I try to share with my people because a lot of people don't have the yeah. opportunity to go to school. Mm -hmm. So if you take what is given to you and apply it and better yourself, that then you'd be better. But I'm just saying, everybody, I mean, even our Hispanic brother and sisters, yeah. they got education. They do see car dinners and stoves and everything going up. Mm -hmm. We still got the mom and pop shops in the hood. And they ain't doing, they just doing the same old thing. When we going to get an Albertsons or a Smith's or, you know, something of that? When we going to get a station casino? 99. When we, uh, we going to do something that's going to, you know, edify our community? Sitting there looking around for our 40 acres and a mm -hmm. You know, get off your behind and do something for yourself. That's what I was taught growing up. Yep. So, um, let's go to, he even goes down and talk about adultery and everything. God don't like you hanging with people that's against him. Because just even if you're not doing it, you're an accessory to the crime. Mm -hmm. You're an accessory. You're supposed to be there reverencing him. If we're supposed to have a gospel of Christ in our mouth, we're supposed to be leading people to be more like him, leading them to Christ. If we just hanging with them, acting like them, you know, what, what's that? He's going to hold us accountable. And that's another thing. Uh, me and Bill was talking. We talking about the, the body of Christ. Talking about waiting to see what God going to do about it. We the body of Christ. We the hands of Christ. Right. What we going to do about it? That's why everything keeps going the way it's going because we're not getting off our butt doing anything about it. We're just allowing things to go. I mean, I took a picture of the gas price the other day. Everybody talk about these, we're waiting on these stimulus checks. How many stimulus checks do you need? If you can't save one to better yourself, how many stimulus checks do you need? Mm. So we should have money stacked up with the, the stimulus checks that they've been given. Yeah. We should have. 
and you know, bills paid up. But I know people that done got every stimulus check that they sent out, and they still wonder where they're going to live because, you know, the rent thing ended at the end of the month. So what'd you do with the money when you had it? Mm, you know, thing. but that goes another thing, too, about education. They didn't teach us that growing up. And our mothers and stuff, you know, they had to take care of the house. We need to start giving to our children, giving back. Really pay attention. We need to start giving back to our children. I teach my children in entrepreneurship. I teach, you can't depend on a job. That job, you know, I have multiple streams of income. Because if one go out, the head come another. This little girl, 16 years old, Breeze Kitchen, she got her own business. So, you know, I got to teach my child what I didn't learn. That way, we don't end up, she don't end up in a worse pandemic than I had. Right. See, we both experienced in the first pandemic together. She, I ain't never seen a pandemic before in my life. But God had already prepared me, you know, taught me investing, taught me stocks, taught me all these kind of things. You know, so I had money to where I am lived prospering in a pandemic. Because I'm not sitting around waiting where my bills are going to be paid. My bills are paid. Because it, then I see the one coming out of Walmart with the TVs. Okay, but you know they just gonna stop the money sometime. Yeah. But see, like I say, people don't. We don't teach our people. We don't show them anything as far as investing and you know learning how to care for ourselves and love ourselves. We too busy showing them handouts. You know, go to the welfare. I'm not saying welfare is bad. I was on welfare myself before I got the school bus. I'm not knocking it, but I'm saying I got it, but I had to go through it, and I used that as a stepping block to get me to where I am. Now, I wouldn't have had what I had working at the school district. That's why God elevated me to be a therapist. So use everything as a, stum as a stepping block instead of a stumbling block. That's what I'm saying. We need to teach our children. Not only don't sound like they're listening, but as long as we put it in their ear, train them up. Yes. Half the time it don't sound like she listening. But when she get into it, something I hear come out of her mouth. Mm -hmm. I hear it. And you know, I'll be like, oh, okay, she heard that. Or if she get through a situation, she know what to do. Right. So it, don't worry about whether it sounds like they listen or not. And if my if anybody's kid is my kid, it's just like old school. I'm not gonna watch some child do something that they ain't supposed to do. Right. I'm gonna tell them that they their parents got something wrong with me, okay, fine, keep your child away from me because I'm not gonna let the child hurt themselves in front of me, not on my watch. Right. So I'm, I'm, I'm not going to school them anything or disrespect the parents or anything like that, but if you see Rihanna doing something you can't get to me, I need you to go ahead and do what you're supposed to do with Rihanna as far as telling her and then let me know or whatever because I don't, what I'm supposed to, I see a kid finna walk across the street and a big red coming, what I'm supposed to do, not say stop? Wow. Not try to help that child? Yes. So anything else is the same. As far as helping that child in school, helping that child do better they self or whatever, that's the same thing. Now, they okay if I say stop before that big rig hit them. Mm -hmm. But they not okay if I, if I say, well, you, you can speak to our child. You can't tell my child that because probably because they don't know or they did something or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying, if that child is in a village, that's what I'm saying. Right. I'm not going to let no child be left behind in my watch. Amen. Because Amen. I, treat my, I treat everybody like my own. Because that's what we're supposed to do. The second commandment is love your neighbor as yourself. Yes. So that's what I'm saying. Witchcraft comes from a lot of hurt people. You know, they get so inside themselves, they don't want to deal with anything else. I'm, I'm speaking at, at um, he moved it from the 30th. He got me on the Saturday. <laughs> I'm speaking on the 31st from 1 to 4. And God already gave me the scripture. I'm, talk, I'm trying to mend broken hearts. He already gave me the scripture. The one, uh, you know, that's misquoted in the Bible. Give it, it should be given unto you. Yeah. No, that's misquoted. They ain't talking about no money. You can't serve God in money. So, I mean, if y'all want to hear that, I'm going to tell you the truth about that. But, um, yeah, I want to hear that one. Yeah, on the 31st, I'll make sure I pick you up by the 12th. I'll tell you the truth I, about that one. That ain't about throwing no money and all this kind of mm -hmm. stuff. But, um, that's what I'm saying. A lot of people have been hurt, especially with this pandemic. They've lost a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So therefore, they're hurt, and they live looking at life through shattered lenses, looking at life through broken hearts, mm -hmm. and you know they mm -hmm. just within themselves, and it's by any means necessary trying to pull. That's where witchcraft comes from. They hanging on to the last thread because mm -hmm. a lot of them are scared because they've never <coughs> seen the pandemic, right. so and they don't know what's coming next. You know, mm -hmm. we thinking it's Brianna, wake up. <laughs> <laughs> 
you they thinking this is gonna stop one one minute thing will stop and then I see the, all the toilet paper gone. I'm like, okay, we must be going through some again. Cause you notice when all the toilet paper gone off yeah. the shelf. Right. Something is gone. Mm -hmm. I have been walking the same club today and saw all that toilet paper. I got up two months worth of toilet paper. <laughs> they said we got toilet paper. But I'm just saying, I don't like I say if, if you need all that toilet paper, you need to go to the doctor. <laughs> Something is wrong. Yeah. But uh they was hoarding toilet paper again. So I'm like, somebody must know something I don't know. So, you know, like, you ever see black people running, you don't know why they're running, but you just keep on running with them? <laughs> so that's what I did. I picked up and picked up. I got toilet paper box. So I got next month worth of toilet paper already at the house. All I got to do is just put it in the boxes. <laughs> but I'm just saying, witchcraft, it comes from a lot of hurt people. Jezebel was a hurt woman. Yeah. She was very, very hurt. That's why she got to be the way she was. And she just spewed uh, hurt and hatred all over the place to the point where when she went to hell, she stayed down there. That's in the book of Revelation. Mm -hmm. You read that for yourself. That's in Revelation 1. I think it's about the 19th or 21st. She was the one that when Jesus went down there to get him, she said, no, I'd better stay down here. Mm -hmm. That's how bad evil is. That's how bad some people's heart is. Some people have a black heart because they've been hurt. So much. they talk about God ain't done nothing for them. But you ain't got up and done nothing to apply God to your life. Yeah. So that's where a lot of witchcraft comes from. Witchcraft, let's go through some things with witchcraft. Witchcraft is stubbornness. Witchcraft is rebelliousness. You know, I think we got that scripture. Yeah, yeah let's read that scripture. I got that scripture on here. First Samuel 15 and 23. Let's read that. And remind me that we read that scripture. 15. First Samuel 15 and 23. Yeah. It's on you. All right. She, I can tell when she's going to sleep because the video or the TV, it'll start laying in the no. side. <laughs> yeah. When I go, you go to sleep. I'm going to bring a spray bottle and start spraying. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> First Samuel 15. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness as is as iniquity and idolatry. Idolatry. Mm -hmm. idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he had also rejected thee from being king. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Witchcraft, stubbornness. When you being stubborn and don't want to do something, Jonah was stubborn. And he found himself in the belly of a well mm -hmm. because he didn't want to go to Nineveh like God said go to Nineveh. Right. Uh, you know how teenagers get rebellion? Y'all can experience that. Mm -hmm. When how they, you tell them to do one thing, they do something else. Yeah. That's rebellion. That's against God. So if God gave us life, and I know he did, he gave yeah. us the strength of our limbs, he wakes us up every morning, he don't have to do it. Dang. He gives us breath. He gives us everything, the activity of our lives, the soundness of our mind. He gives yes. us everything that we need for that day. And then for him to ask us yes. to do something, and we say, no, no. But we don't do it. Mm -hmm. Who are we? Who are we? We can't do that. Because whenever God gets tired of you, all you got to do is remove his breath. Yes. We learned that in Ananias and Survivor. They drop dead immediately. Yes. They did. Mm. But I'm just saying, anytime you do something mm. or you backslide or something like that, if you are still breathing, if you're still able to raise your hand, if you're still able to wake up in the morning, that means God loves you mm. and there's no condemnation. Mm. Because if he didn't love you, if he couldn't stand you, you wouldn't be able to do none of those things. Mm. Because it is him that we have the activity of our man. Mm. It is him yes. that we have our being. Yes. We don't have to sit here and say, okay, I got to breathe here, I got to exhale. I got to inhale, I got to exhale. We do that. We don't have to concentrate on that because mm -hmm. God takes care of that. Yes. He lives in our heart. He's not outside in the sky. And, I mean, he's all around, but he lives in our heart. So, yes. therefore, he monitors and keeps this body together. Mm -hmm. He gives us the act. He get, tells the brain, you know, move this arm, move it. He does that. God lives on the inside of you. Amen. Jesus thought it was, he didn't think it robbery to be, think as he was as God. Because he knew God was on the inside of him, the Spirit of the Holy Ghost. 
The spirit of the living God lived on the inside of him. Everything that Jesus had on the face of this earth is what we have. That's why he said we was going to be able to do more than he did. Yes. So the same Holy Ghost, the same power that he walked with those three years is the same what we have. We just got to believe. We got to have the faith. We got to be able to move. Um, we got to be without sin. You know, we know if God is convicting us of something to, you know, like he was convicting me of alcohol and, and cigarettes. Mm -hmm. He convicted me, well, I got tired of it. You know, there's got to be a conversion. You know, right, right. I let it go. Yeah. And like I said, when you give up something, sacrifice something for God, God will replace it with something greater. Amen. I mean, Amen. I was preaching the other day, and right then and there, one the lady was asked a question. God spoke right then and delivered. She went bouncing all around, the Holy Ghost all over. She knocking over the lights there. And everything. I said, catch her, catch her. And she just right then and there. And you just can see the countenance of God all over her. This other woman, I didn't even know. But God was speaking to me the whole time I was preaching. I said, God got a word for you. Come to find out she had cancer. And I said, God wants you to believe that he's going to take it from you. Not that you can manage yes. that he's going to take it from you. And I do. I know prophets and people that's been cancer free. That's been removed. Yes. And something like that. Yes. She got blessed. But like I said, to be at this level, you got to want to do some things that people, other people don't want to do. Yes. And everybody can't go with you at this level. That's right. You know, this, like I said, it's a lonely road because you can't share everything with everybody at this level. Because if sister so-and-so see you doing this, you know, she gonna be like a crab in a bucket. She gonna wanna pull you down. And that's not the love of Christ. We ought to be able to wanna lift one another up. That's witchcraft. If you have that type of spirit on the inside of you, that's witchcraft. Right. So we gotta have a spirit that where if we see our brother or sister in need, we ought to be able to wanna help them if we got it. Or at least try to figure out how to help them get it. You know, not put our own self in a, in, a, in a bind or whatever, but at least don't walk by them and say, well, that's your problem. I got my own. That's not the spirit of God. Right. right. We got to be the body of Christ. And the body is supposed to be connected to the head. And if Jesus is the head, then we're supposed to be able to think and act and walk and talk and do like he did. Not sit around here and do like, you know, something that's demonic right. or, you know, human sacrificing or idolatry or doing other things, you know, that we're not supposed to do. A lot of us is having mental illnesses. A lot of us is having health issues and everything because God is trying to get us to take away some things. Some of these things we ain't supposed to eat because they ain't good for the body. Right. High blood pressure. You know, diabetes. You know, that's because you know. I used to do pregnancy by the case. I had to let that go. But <laughs> my blood sugar was so high, I had to let it go. But I'm just saying, God will do something or call something to let it go. You know, obedience is better than sacrifice. Yes, it is. So, witchcraft may be holding you, your, your own down. So, um, if, I want to talk about surely put to death the familiar spirit, or with the surely put to death, they shall stone them with stones, their blood shall be upon thee. God is not going to protect you if you're not for him. He said, you're either for me or you're against me. That's right. So, if you're not doing all the will of his commandments. First of all, you gotta be in his word to know what his commandments are. So if you aren't eating the word of God, feeding your spirit the word of God, how are you gonna know what his commandments are? So, and, and to, you know, ignorance is not an excuse. You know, that's just darkness. Jesus is the light of the world. Amen. You know, knowledge is light. You know, you gotta be able to pay attention. You gotta be able to know. And just because you hiding or running from looking at the word, that's gonna hold you exempt. So you need to know what the word of God says. You need to feed your spirit the word of God. You need to feed your spirit man more than you feed your flesh. Because yes. your flesh will to have it will have a mind of its own, take control of a mind of its own. So um let's try to go on and do the number three. Let's go to Deuteronomy 18, 9 through 12. Nine 
whoever does these things is disgusting to the Lord. The Lord your God is walking, forcing these nations out of out of your way because of their disgusting practices. She has a different version, so I'm trying to. But like the King James Version says, When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. So, when God gives you a land, you're not supposed to like, okay, now we gave the land of Canaan to the children of Israel. They had to go spy out the land. They found out the things that they were doing. That didn't mean for them to go and start doing the same thing. You know, they had a lot of sodomy. They had a lot of all kind of idolatry, idols and stuff. We supposed to go in there and clear it out. Right. You know, the spoils you are laid up for the just. But if you go in there and you're doing the same thing that they're doing, then how are you going to be a light to them? Okay. You cannot be a light to them if you're doing the same thing. That's right. Um, like I said, when I look at somebody, a, a minister, in order for me to be fed, they got to be, you know, no more than I do. So I listen to them, but if I see them doing something contrary to what they're preaching, if it ain't doing you, why is it going to do me? You know? <laughs> so what I'm saying is the abominations, you know, there's more than one abomination in the Bible. Mm -hmm. The only abomination, we, and we in Pride Month, the one abomination everybody likes to call out is the homosexual. That's the only abomination that people know. If you go home, get your concordance. Even Google it. The abomination, you'll see that there is more than one, more than just that. You can't point your finger at somebody else and not find yourself in that book too. So, that's what I'm saying. The abominations, you know, things sin, things that God hates. This thing just went dead. <laughs> things that God hates. Those are abominations. Um, stealing, lying, cheating, those are abominations. Mm -hmm. um, we can't look just because they're more outward with it, mm -hmm. the iniquity <laughs> on the inside is still an abomination. Yes. And that's where ma uh, witchcraft manifests at, is because we holding stuff on the inside, hurt on the inside mm -hmm. from maybe childhood or yeah. whatever. We need yeah. to learn to release that. You know, yeah. get it out, and you know, that, I'm not saying, if, maybe you ain't got to go to a therapist or whatever. Maybe you just need to cry it out or write it in a journal, mm -hmm. but you need to release that thing. Yeah. Forgive some people. That's what yeah. you need to do. Forgive people. Because yeah. if you don't forgive people, it festers and it creates witchcraft. That's right. And you find yourself in hell behind hating on somebody else. Yeah. Somebody that's like going on with their life, living their life, doing their best, living their best. Right. And here you is sitting here with the same old hurt back when, oh, my, my brother slapped me when I was 10. Mm -hmm. I'm 50 years old. I'm still holding on to that. Stuff like that. So. Children of salt. Right. right. Yeah. The, it, it don't, forgiveness is not for them. It's for you. It frees you. That's right. As long as you forgive, then God will forgive you. If you don't forgive, you're going to sit there in your mess. Mm -hmm. You're going to sit there in the belly of the well like Jonah is. Jonah didn't want to go, go do anything that God said about those people. Because he knew God was going to turn around and bless them. And he was like, I'm tired. You know, they were doing too much. All that. I'm tired. I'm going to go over here to Tarshish. And God said, no, you're not. Got to call up a well. He went inside the well and he sat there three days and three nights. Sitting there amongst all that mess until the well spewed him out. And the well didn't spew him out until Jonah got on his face and said, okay, I'm ready to surrender. You got to surrender that thing. That witchcraft, that unforgiveness, that, that hurt, that pain is not worth taking with you. Mm, that's right. If we're not talking to our loved ones, that's not of God. Mm, that's that's right. the, the Bible say, honor thy mother, thy father. I don't care how old you are. Really I'm right. 50 years old and I still honor my mother. Because mm. if not, it'll make my days short. Yes. That's what the scriptures say. Mm. I can't run around here and get 50 years old. I'm grown now. I'm going to do what I want to do. Um. Mama going to be like, slap me upside. <laughs> I honor my mother because of that scripture. Amen. I honor my mother. If my father was 
was living, I would honor him too. But I'm just saying, I honor him. And I tell Marcus, I tell him all the time, I say, you know that word, Ephesians 6, you know it definitely. All the time, I'm, I'm drilling at him. I say, you 20 and smelling yourself, don't forget. I'm saying, your mama. Right. <laughs> but I'm just saying, I honor my mother. I don't care how old you are. If you ever get to the point where you don't honor your parents, even in death, you don't honor my grandparents, my dad, everybody. If you ever get to the point where you can't honor nobody, then you know God's going to have you sitting there. If you got people that's living and you ain't spoke to them, you need to call them up. In this season, it's a blessing to be able to call somebody up. Yes. Because there's been so many people that done died. This pandemic, mm, so yeah. many people that died. Oh, you need to be able to contact people as, as long as you can contact them. Yes. Because there's going to come a day when we can't even contact God. That's right. He said in the scripture, there's going to come a day, the Bible's and everything, it's got to be written on our heart. Yes. It's got to be. So, if there's anybody in your life that you haven't spoke to that God pulling on your heart to speak to, you better go on and do it. Because you don't know that that person might be living. You know, today might be gone tomorrow. Yeah. I remember T.D. Jake say, you know, he glad when he he went on and did what God said do with Whitney Houston because the next day she was dead. Mm -hmm. He didn't know. God told him to say something to her. He did. She was gone. Mm -hmm. Like I said, this season... People is leaving here left and right. Yes, yes, it's yes. like the earth is cleaning itself up. People leaving yes. here, you know, generals are going home yes. because they've done their time, they've served, and then there's something that's going home because they ain't doing right by God, and God is putting them home. Yes. Send them right. home. Right. You know, heaven is filling up just like heaven is too. Right. So if make sure we got it right with God before yes. we worry about anybody else. Yes. So let's go to um, Deuteronomy 18.10. Oh, we got eight minutes. We got one more. Deuteronomy 18.10. Oh, we read that. Never mind. Let's go to the next one. Oh, I didn't read it. It said, there shall not be found among you anyone that baketh his son or his daughter to pass through fire, or that uses divination or an observer of times, or an enchanter or a witch. We ain't doing it anymore. You know, Lord Baker got a lot of psychics. That's against God. Yeah. God was stoning yeah. you for that. Mm -hmm. You don't go to somebody else. You his creation. Right. And he'll he'll put I'm you down for that. Your palm and all that. Uh, 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 you don't that's that's uh, uh, that's witchcraft for real. Yeah. You don't you don't that's totally against God. That's I mean you putting something else before him. Let's go to this is our last scripture because we are it's it's seven twenty-three. Let's go to second Kings twenty one and six. Are you <laughs> and he made his sons pass through the fire and observe and observe times and used enchantments and dealt with familiar spirits and wizards. He wrought much wickedness in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. Now he was saying. He provoked, who, could you imagine provoking God to anger? Mm -hmm. The last time I, I can remember God provoked to anger, Moses had to pray God off the people. He was going to kill all 6,000 of them. But mm -hmm. Moses said, if you do this, then they're going to say you couldn't do it. It's good to have somebody that can intercede for you with God. Amen. Because if God get mad at you, that's, I mean, there ain't nothing you can do to it. I mean, there's got to have somebody in your corner that can pray. You know, God does listen to his creation. He's not so big on himself that he, he could have told Moses, you know, you know what you're talking about and he's going to get it. But when God is provoked to anger, and that's not saying all this stuff in the world is happening because God provoked to anger. There's a, an evil spirit running around too. God is in the protecting his people. Through this pandemic, my house has not been hit. Amen. I serve the Lord. I'm not saying it in my strength, but God honors his work. Amen. Just like through all the plagues in the book of Exodus, they went through all the plagues. Amen. Frogs and lo locusts. I heard the locusts the other day. I said, you know what time it is? <laughs> <laughs> the locusts, the grasshoppers, the, the frogs, the, the, the flies, all of the plagues and stuff. The people were in it, but it didn't touch them. I remember, y'all remember them grasshoppers that was flying out here not long ago, yep. last year? Yes. I saw them, and I was looking, I said, Lord, look at this. But I noticed, out of all of them, even on my clock, 
They never came in my house. They never, cause God know I can't stand crawling pigs. They never got on me. And he was showing me how he protected the children of Israel. Yeah. You put um, blood under your door. I didn't put, well, I, the blood is on your heart now. <laughs> I'm covered in the blood now. But I'm just saying, I was amazed. As I walked through from the door to the car, none of them touched me. That was God showing me yeah. what it looked like back in the book of Exodus. So I can't stand nothing crawling on me. I would lose my, I ain't say my religion, but I would lose my mind. <laughs> I don't like nothing crawling on me. I can't stand it. But I'm saying, he was showing me what that looked like. And if people saw that and they didn't believe that the Bible is real and there's a real God, something wrong with it. Yeah. I'm in the mental health field. They keep me busy. Because I'm yeah. like, if you don't believe there's a God after all that you've seen, something's wrong. And like I say, I say all the time, I say, with everything that I've seen in my little 50 years, I would not be surprised if Jesus come back in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. Because we've seen some stuff. Yeah, yeah. And we've seen a lot of people, not physically seen, but you've seen a lot of people die. I have went by the graveyards, and I have never seen so many funerals going on in all my time of living. Oh, yeah. Four and five at a time. I'm like, graveyard is trending. Yeah. I'm like, y'all don't know yeah. You don't believe the numbers, but you know they, they, what they saying on the news. Drive out the cemetery. Y'all still change yeah. real. Sure. They'll show you. I ain't never yeah. seen that many caskets at one time, and I and not be in a mortuary right. or something. Yeah. I'm like, I can't, I can't understand it. I'm like, Lord, what's going on? Mm -hmm. What are you doing? And I, He showed me the Book of Revelation is fulfilling itself. Mm -hmm. If you don't believe in the Bible and the Word. Some come on, come on. I, I, I need to talk. I mean, we need to have a session yeah. because that's mental illness right there. Yeah. Because everything that you see going on, mm -hmm. who else could have done it? Who else can still wake up and you know the clouds and the skies? You know who else could create all of this? Right. We yeah. what man you know can take a shovel and build a mountain? Mm -hmm. You know there's got to be a God. Yeah. There's got to be something bigger than ourselves yeah. out here. So, I knew we wasn't going to get done, so it would be week three on witchcraft. <laughs> Somebody pray us out. It's, it's past time now. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus.